Joining me now is retired U.S. Navy Admiral at Dennis Blair. He's a former commander of the United States Forces in the Pacific region. Admiral, welcome to the show. Nice to be here, Asya. You've been to a lot of these things before, but this is the first time China is taking part. What is the significance of that? Well, I go back with China participation a long, a long way back in 1988 when I was commander of the Pearl Harbor Naval Station. A Chinese uh, training ship came for a goodwill visit. After that, Tiananmen Square, no relations for, for a while. When I was commander in chief of the Pacific, I invited the Chinese to participate in RIMPAC. We're talking 2000, 2001, and they did, were not ready at that time. So I think it's great that they have finally joined this big multinational common mission uh, exercise. There's a lot of talk, Admiral, about cooperation. One of the objectives is to enable the participating countries to work closer together at sea. Can you give us a sense of some of the areas China and the U.S. could make progress as a result of these joint exercises? One very important one is um, search and rescue operations. Um, I was commander in chief of Pacific Command during the EP3 incident when a Chinese fighter ran into an, a U.S. Uh, patrol aircraft. Unfortunately, the Chinese fighter went down, pilot was killed. We did not have procedures to be able to uh, search uh, the area together, which many uh, countries have. We should develop those. And things like the Malaysian flight uh, mm -hmm. certainly uh, bring that. But uh, also uh, disaster relief. Uh, the Pacific is subject to earthquakes, tsunamis, many things. And naval forces are often the uh, first ones on the scene with the most capability, and we need to be able to do that together. Many nations in the region do. China has not really joined into that structure yet, but they should. Um, Vice Admiral Floyd has also stressed the importance of building relationships and noted that this event can be, you know, can help participants do just that. He said, quote, relationships span the oceans and the years. Can this event be a turning point in U.S.-China maritime relations? I hope so. I hope so. Generally, uh, you find that navies are more progressive in working with each other. They face a common set of enemies, that is, the sea and the weather and uh, and it's just, it's just tough to, to stay out there and uh, ships try to help each other. So that builds a bond. They're a little bit further away from um, their own territory, the flagpole, where all of those tensions are, and they can work together. So I hope navies can be, sort of lead the way in terms of uh, better military cooperation across the board. And again, you're familiar with these types of exercises. You've been to many before. Give us some color. Set the scene for us. What goes on in the evening hours? What happens? behind the smiles and handshakes. Um, are there substantive negotiations or talks going on? Is it all, you know, more relaxed atmosphere? Give us some perspective. Well, uh, the, the main objective is, is to form coalition task forces in a simulated uh, situation, a uh, natural disaster of some kind. Uh, and you actually go through about 90% of the things you would do in an actual situation. So staff officers learn to work together, commanders work together, you iron out communications difficulties so that you can react quickly and effectively in the, in, in the real event. But then after hours, uh, sailors do what sailors do, which is go have a drink together, uh, compare notes, and hopefully they find that they have more in common than they do uh, apart. Uh, frankly, the uh, Chinese uh, Navy has been pretty uh, inward, inward looking for many years, and it's time they, they looked out and joined sort of the community of seafaring nations, uh, which has, most people find, a lot more in common, most mm -hmm. sailors find a lot more in common than they do uh, that set them apart. You mentioned communication, if there is a real emergency. How is that communication between various countries coordinated? If they are um, immediately working on the same problem, that is responding to a disaster, then the most effective is, is if you get the military commanders in touch with each other directly. They, they have to do all of the, the stuff to make it all come together. If it's an ambiguous situation or a situation in which the policies of the two countries aren't clear, maybe they have different objectives, then it's hard because the two governments have to decide what their approach is going to be before the military commanders can carry out the mission that they, uh, their countries decide to. So it really depends on the guidance they get from the top. Um, the Chinese have also brought a very impressive hospital ship uh, to these exercises. It has a number of operating rooms, top doctors and top nurses. Uh, anything significant the Chinese can learn from the U.S. as far as bringing this 
hospital ship? I think um, you know hospital ships are pretty uh, pretty well understood and 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 well well known, and, and it's wonderful that uh, China has a hospital ship to be able to bring that kind of care. That the American ships were very useful in Indonesia back in mm -hmm. 2004 when the uh, tsunami uh, took place took place there, and the more of that kind of care, uh, the better. I would think that the really great thing you could do would be to say which uh, ship has which skills. So maybe this one has a better uh, orthopedic surgeon. Maybe this one has a, a, a better uh, person to deal with uh, to deal with burn wounds. And so that we could uh, exchange all that information so that we could be most effective when we are together. Admiral, it's not just the US and China, of course. Some 22 countries are taking part. Um, how will the participation of all these countries um, contribute to stability, peace, and safety of the region? I think that, number one, the fact that they're all there mm -hmm. is, uh, is uh, significant. The fact that they're working on something that's a common mission, not worrying about their war plans against each other in the case of conflict is uh, extremely uh, significant. And the, um, the realization that, uh, you know, maybe the uh, missions and problems that we have in common are perhaps more important than the ones mm -hmm. that, uh, that the ones that uh, w divide us. Now, it's not it's not for the sailors to decide. That's a government decision. But I think the understanding of uh, each other's armed forces can hopefully penetrate up into governments and uh, make a difference. And I got to also ask you about the sea lanes in South China Sea. Another goal of these exercises is to keep pirates away, to keep those uh, sea lanes that are so important for trade safe. Absolutely. And the, um, this is a this, this is another common mission. And, um, you know, you hear some in China who say we have to protect our shipping and uh, just as the United States has protected its shipping. In fact, uh, freedom of navigation is a common good, which armed for which navies and coast guards of all countries uh, have a responsibility to protect. We've done that in the past. Uh, if China can join that, uh, can join that uh, coalition that uh, forms to do the job, to keep away pirates, terrorists, mm -hmm. uh, so much the better. And I, I want to go back to the hospital ship that China has brought. We saw in one of our reports that civilians, Americans, are actually going on this uh, ship and touring it. How does that work? Can, can anyone just go and tour one of these uh, boats and ships? Yes, uh, all, all navies, all, all ships have uh, standard uh, procedures for what's, what's called a visit ship. So when they pull into a country, for instance, when the uh, American ships visited uh, Qingdao uh, in, in, in China, they set up a route. Civilians come on board, look around, they're shown things. An awful lot of what navies do is, is unclassified and can be, and can be freely shared with uh, publics of, uh, of, all, of all countries. And uh, that's to the good. But the real thing that I think that you notice when you visit a ship is what's the, what are the, the sailors and petty officers and officers like? You know, what's the glint in their eye? How, how sharp are they? That's what you really, that's what, what you really pick up. What about the technology? Up. Is that just as important, the technology on board these ships? I'd, I'd say that people are more important than, than the technology. Uh, all, all nations uh, have, have uh, technology. China itself has some, some pretty snazzy stuff. But the question is, can the, uh, can the uh, people work it effectively? Can the sailors and petty officers? And would you like to see China continue to be part of these exercises in the years to come? Absolutely, absolutely. I would hope that they would host them, that, that, uh, that they would be in inclusive, and that they would realize that uh, when we say that the oceans are big enough for all of us, that means that not that we divide it up. There's a big chunk for China and there's a big chunk for the United States, but that we all operate together under the UN Convention of the Laws of the Sea uh, throughout these, uh, throughout this uh, big ocean space for our common good. And what will be the benefit of China perhaps hosting one of these? It's got one. It's one of the big uh, big navies now of the uh, of, of the region, and and the more that the big navies of the region can. Um, share the responsibilities for these uh, common missions, the better it will be. The United States is uh, perfectly happy to share uh, the common goods of uh, the maritime domain with all countries, including China. But that means that we don't divide them up. This is my piece. This is your piece. That means that we work together jointly under agreed circumstances mm -hmm. so that the gas, natural gas underneath them, the fish underneath them, the benefits of trade all go to, to all countries, which is uh, prosperity for all. Uh, and I have one final question to mm -hmm. ask you, and um, we're running out of time, so a quick answer would be appreciated. The exercises, of course, are taking part at a time when 
There have been some tensions over China's territorial claims in South and East China Seas. Uh, do you think these types of military exercises could diffuse some of those tensions? What I would hope would be that we would realize that uh, there will be points of friction which you're arguing about a maritime issue. There will be times when you're working with it, and they should not uh, interfere with an overall positive relationship. Thank you so much. Uh